Father, we pray that you would make vessels out of us, Lord. That you would crush us and shape us into whatever you need us to be in this season of our lives and in our cities and in our country, Father God. We pray that you would break us, Lord God. We pray that you would shape us and that you would mold us, Lord God. We pray for your will to be executed in our lives, no matter how painful it might be. And Father God, we just lift up this time to you. In Jesus' name. In the crushing, in the pressing, Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Make us your vessel today, Father God. Make us your vessel today, Lord. We praise you tonight, Father God, for you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And we come before you, Father God, acknowledging that you are God. That, Father God, you got the power and the authority, Lord. And that's why, Father God, we, we tell you today, Father God, make us your vessel, Lord. Father, as Psalms 143.10 says, teach us, Lord. Teach me to do your will, Father God. Let your good spirit lead me in a level ground, Lord. Teach us tonight, Father God. Teach us today to do your perfect will in our lives, Father. In our families, Lord. In our cities. In our country, Father God. Help us, Lord. We thank you. We thank you because we trust in a God, in a good God, in a good Father. And we come before you, Father God, trusting that you, Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. Align our lives to your will, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for your presence in each home that right now is listening, Father God. Let your Holy Spirit invade each living room. Let the Holy Spirit invade each heart, each mind. That, Father God, we will rest in your power and in your authority lord father have it your way tonight lord have it your way in this place holy spirit have it your way in our homes have it your way in our lives lord in the name of jesus in the name of jesus amen and amen hallelujah give a big round of applause to our lord and savior jesus christ amen because he lives we live today and because he lives we do not fear tomorrow amen god bless you chapel of change friends and family my name is pastor sandy we're so delighted that you have joined us today i believe god has a word for you today I believe God has prepared your heart to receive that word today. Would you say, Lord, speak to me today? Would you say to the person next to you, I am ready? Amen. We will continue to study God's word today. And we will continue to praise the Lord through our offerings. Get ready. Get your heart ready to give unto the Lord the best offering of your heart and financially amen i'm so happy that you have joined us through chapel of change uh chapel of change.org remember i just wanted to remind you that at the end of our service you have the opportunity to go to chapel of change.org and give give to the lord what he already had given to you amen and today just Make sure you have your Bible next to you, amen? Pastor Laura loves to see a Bible that sounds like paper, amen? And we do. You know why? Sometimes our cell phones go crazy, and we cannot connect through our cell phones. But the Bible is always there, amen? So I'm going to ask you to please share as well. There's friends who need to hear today's word. There's family members who need to hear today's Facebook, not a problem. We are streaming lined. And how do you do that? You just go to streamlined.com backslash chapel of changed. And your friend or your family member will directly be connected to our streamline. Amen. So are, we, are you ready to receive the word today? As always, it is my privilege, my honor to introduce to you our pastor, our senior pastor, Laura Worth. God bless you, pastor, and give us to, to us what God already gave you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sandy. And thank you, Kim and Gerson. You know, we are a team here, so it's not just me, it's us. 
And I believe that God has specifically um, placed an anointing on everybody up here so that collectively um, God can just uh, speak his word in a more powerful way. And so I'm grateful for the team that I have with me throughout the school of prayer. Um, I want to welcome everyone and say God bless you for watching. Uh, God bless you for persevering uh, throughout the school of prayer. Today, uh, tonight is week four, and tonight um, we uh, we are going to get into the Word of God. God has placed uh, a word inside me uh, for you, and I just want to remind you, especially if you are a family from Chapel of Change, that our core value, number one, is that we are a people who pray. That is our DNA at Chapel of Change, and our objective uh, for the school of prayer is that we may impart some things to you that we have learned both by personal experience and in the word of God. And so our prayer is that all of us would be stirred up to a greater level of prayer. Amen. So last week, we learned that prayer is a call to holiness. We learned that prayer is a call to holiness, which means to be set apart and transformed. And that when we live in such a way, our prayers become more powerful and more effective. So everything that we have been learning from the first week, a call to intimacy, to a call to sacrifice, a call to holiness, holiness is important that we don't leave anything out but that together we journey and and continue to add tools and greater levels of understanding to our arsenal of prayer and so tonight this week we will learn that prayer is a call to spiritual alignment now, when you go to look up in the dictionary that word alignment, there are two primary definitions that are given. Alignment means, number one, arrangement in a straight line or in a correct or appropriate relative position. And two, it means a position of agreement or alliance. So the first meaning of alignment is the physical position of a line or something that must be in a straight or correct place in order to flow or function properly. For example, you have your car's wheel alignment. Now when you drive your car, you want your steering wheel to align perfectly with your wheel so that you can steer your car easily. But when your alignment is off, what happens is that your car will begin to experience performance problems. Therefore, an alignment will be necessary. And in the second meaning of alignment, it is a mental or a heart position that says you agree with or support a particular person, group, or cause. You share a similar interest. Therefore, an alignment exists. Tonight, we will learn about spiritual alignment and how it directly connects to prayer. So I want you to lean in. I want you to have your Bible open, a pen and a piece of paper, and just begin to write those things that God will place in your heart through the Word of God as we learn together tonight. And so as I would like to do before we begin in the, the uh, core of our message, I want us to worship together. Everyone, lift your hands, raise your voice, stand up no matter where you are at. And we're going to sing hallelujah together. Amen.
praise be to the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the great shepherd of the sheep, the creator and the almighty God, the El Shaddai, the one who lives forevermore, who is from everlasting to everlasting and of whose kingdom there shall never be an end. We say hallelujah to you. We praise you. And we thank you again for another day, another day, another opportunity to live for you. We ask tonight, oh God, that you would align our thoughts, that you would align our words, that you would align our reactions, our attitudes, God, that all of us, all of us tonight that are listening in would align ourselves to you, Lord God. May you give us a desire to lean, to lean in like never before. We ask God that you have your way. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God is good. And he's not just good because we've experienced his goodness. Goodness is part of his character. He cannot help but be good. So with that, we say, God is good. So tonight we are learning that a call to prayer is a call to spiritual alignment. But tonight I want to take us a little bit deeper and I want us to understand that a call to spiritual alignment is a call to agreement. It's called agreement, an agreement with God and specifically agreement with God's will. I want us to open our Bibles tonight to the book of Luke chapter 11 verses 1 through 3. And I want to read this account, this passage uh, in the Bible where Jesus is with his disciples and he's teaching them a lesson, a lesson that they asked to be taught. And I want us, my prayer is that we will be asking Jesus the same question uh, tonight, even after uh, our study session is over. And so starting in verse 1 of Luke 11, it says, Now it came to pass... As he, Jesus, was praying in a certain place when he passed, or uh, when he ceased, rather, that one of his disciples asked him or said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And so he said to them, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is a prayer of alignment. That is a verbal declaration that one is in agreement with the will of God. And this was the type of prayer that Jesus was teaching his disciples. Therefore, should be our prayer. The will of God should be our priority. The will of man must be surrendered to the will of God. There are too many self-willed Christians. We need to understand the difference because it's very sad and it's very unfortunate. God makes things very clear. But there are many self-willed Christians they are out of alignment. They are out of order. They are misaligned. They are obstinately doing what they want in spite of the desires, the plans, and the instructions of God. It's a dangerous thing to live a self-willed life. In Romans 2.8 in the Amplified Version, it says, But for those who are self-seeking and self-willed, and disobedient to the truth, but responsive to wickedness, there will be indignation and wrath. Alignment is a call to full obedience. Alignment is a call to yieldedness. Alignment is a call to agreement with God. 
Now, the second thing that I want to point out tonight is that a call to spiritual alignment is a call to arrangement. Let me explain. This means an arrangement of our life. It's not enough to only agree with the will of God, but our life must be arranged in such a way to line up with the will of God. There is an action that is required on our part. Now, shortly before Jesus was arrested and crucified, he went to meet with the Father again, as was his custom. In other words, he went to pray. Now, he had an assignment before him, and he knew what he was facing, yet it was agonizing. It was agonizing. And so he, he decided that he surrendered his will to the will of the Father. It was a decision that he had already made long ago, that his will was not his own, but that he had absolutely surrendered his will to the will of the Father. And I want us to read in the book of Luke, chapter 22, verses 39 through 42. I want us to see this. Because Jesus had just, uh, uh, several passage pri- passages prior, had told his disciples, this is how you should pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And now here he is facing the very will of God as painful and agonizing as it is. Now he goes a step further and he actually demonstrate what he meant to the disciples back in the book of Luke chapter 11. And this is what he says in Luke 22, starting in verse 39. It says, coming out, he, Jesus, went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. Now, I want to highlight that for a moment because in other verses or other passages, Jesus tells his disciples, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. So here he is again telling us, his disciples, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And I can't help but wonder why. And my conclusion is that it is very tempting to step outside of God's will when what we are facing is very painful, very uncomfortable, very inconvenient. It literally goes against our grain. It it is like sandpaper rubbing against our skin. It doesn't feel good. We don't like it. And so he warns the disciples in this passage. He says, pray that you may not enter into temptation. Because it is very easy when we go about doing our own will, our own way to live uh, uh, and, and fall for the temptation that comes before us. So he says, pray, pray, pray that you may not enter into temptation. In the next verse, he said, and, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. So Jesus was stepped aside from the disciples. He went to his own space. I like that because he makes a clear distinction. There's a place where we are to gather corporately and to pray in a group, whether it be a small group or a large gathering. But there is also a place where we are to step aside and step away And pray alone with the Father. And this is what Jesus was doing. So he was withdrawn from the disciples about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and prayed saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Here's what I want us to see. How would Jesus have known the will of the Father unless he had first secured the voice of God, the voice of the Father? 
I want us to understand because this is very important. Many times we don't know what the will of God is for our life. And, and much of the reason is because we don't secure the voice of God for our life. We must, it's necessary that we secure the voice of God for our life, for our family, for our ministry, for our career, for every aspect of our life in order to know the will of God. I've said this before, but we have to master the art of waiting in the presence of God. We cannot allow drive through prayer to affect us the way drive through is affecting the world. Everything is microwave. Everything is quick. The world operates at a rapid rate, but not for us. He says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. There are blessings in waiting upon the Lord. Are we waiting upon the Lord so that we may secure the voice of God, so that we may know without a doubt what is the will of God for us? Are we just winging it? Are we just coming up with good ideas? Are we coming up with things that just look good? Or something that sounds reasonable? Or are we doing what everybody else is doing? Listen, there is man's wisdom and there is God's wisdom. And many times what we do is we twist them. We have them backwards. We say, well, you know what? This sounds reasonable. It sounds wise. Therefore, I'm going to take action in this direction. That is called foolishness. Because if we don't go to God, there is no way that we are going to listen for his voice and therefore know what the will of God is for our life. That's what I mean by saying that there are too many self-willed Christians. They go about living their life doing their own thing. They go and they figure out what type of job they want to have. They go and they figure out what type of spouse they should have. And they feel the right to make these choices on their own. But let me tell you, when you make those type of life-altering choices, there will be consequences. There will be heart-wrenching consequences to pay. Because when you make those type of significant choices in your life, that means that you are out of line with God's will because now you are operating in your own will. And then later what will happen is you will say, well, I am unequally yoked. Let me tell you, God has mercy. We make mistakes, but we cannot make the same one over and over. We have to come to a place in our walk with God where we have to be willing to say, Lord, I see my track record. I see what my own choices and my own will has caused me. Therefore, Lord, I am making a decision to surrender my will to you. If anyone had the right to follow their own will, It was Jesus, but not even Jesus did that. I want us to look at John chapter 5 verse 30 in the Amplified Version. He makes it very clear cut without a shadow of a doubt. He says, I am able to do nothing from myself independently of my own accord, but only as I am taught by God and as I get his orders. Even as I hear, I judge, I decide as I am bidden to decide, as the voice comes to me, so I give a decision. And my judgment is right, just righteous, because, I want us to underline that word, because I do not seek or consult my own will because I do not seek or consult my own will. I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself, my own aim, my own purpose, but only the will and pleasure of the father who sent me. We are to do likewise. Jesus is our ultimate role model. And he came in the flesh to demonstrate to you and I by his 
actions what we are to do with our own life and how we are to live. We are to become an expression of God's will. We are to become an expression of God's will. If our will is strong, we will not see the strength of God. If our will is powerful, we will not see the power of God. Why is that? Because our own strength, by choosing our own will, is hindering the strength of God to flow in our life. Our own choice. If we don't see the power of God in our life, is because we have become so powerful in our own will that we are unwilling to yield or to budge. Therefore, the power of God is not free to flow through and in our life. We hear oftentimes about strong-willed child, child or children. I have a book at home called The Strong-Willed Child. Got that years ago before I had kids. And let me tell you, God still has strong-willed children in his kingdom today. And it's about time tonight that we break free from those strong wills of ours and put them to death, surrender them absolutely so that the will of God can take place in our life through and through. When we surrender, we lose ownership over our life. Our life is not our own. We don't live for ourselves anymore. We live for him. Apostle Paul echoed those words when he said, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Galatians 2.20. Our prayer tonight as Pastor Sandy mentioned, when she introduced us, she said in Psalm 143.10, and our prayer together should be, Lord, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. I want us to think about this question tonight. No matter how long we've been serving God, whether we've just come into the kingdom of God, a day ago, a year ago, whether we've been serving God for 10, 20, or 50 years, it does not matter. We must all come to the point where we ask ourselves, are we aligned with the will of God? Can we say that our will is no longer our own? That our will has been surrendered to the will of God? We must be willing to master the art of waiting upon God, to spend time in his presence, to stay in his presence, to press into his presence so that we can hear very clearly what God is saying to us. We cannot afford to take a chance with our life and even with our eternity. We have to be willing to come to a place in our life where we lift up our hands and we say, Lord, I surrender. We cannot afford to use that term loosely. Many times we say, I surrendered my life to Jesus 10 years ago. But that actually never took place. We never surrendered our life. We said a prayer. We said, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. But we never surrendered our life to Jesus. Some of us have to go back. Some of us have to repent. Some of us have to come to terms that that never actually took place. We have to say, God, I am ready and willing for the first time in my life to surrender absolutely everything that I am and everything that I'm not, and give it over to God. We need to know the will of God for our life. We need the heavenly blueprint. We need to hear the wisdom and the instructions that can only come from God. How else will we know what God is saying to us? When it comes to prayer, Spiritual alignment is absolutely necessary. 
We have to come to a place of spiritual alignment. We have to align our life and our will with the will of the Father. I experienced what an alignment meant back in 2006. I actually was driving in my car one early morning in 2006, and it was dark out. It was early morning, but it was still dark. And I remember as I was driving, there was a car in front of me that turned uh, rapidly, and I couldn't, didn't have enough time to see that there was a semi-truck tire laid out right in the middle of my lane. And as I was going about 60 miles an hour, I had no time to react so I actually ran into this, and as I hit the tire, I felt my car lift up in the air, and when it landed, it landed to the side. It landed to the side. It was slanted, and I remember in that moment, I was holding on to the steering wheel, and the only thing I can think of in that second is don't let that wheel go. Keep that wheel fight to keep that wheel straight because I knew I had enough sense to know that if I let go of that wheel, the car was going to spin out. But as I tried and tried and tried to keep control of that wheel, I noticed that because the car had landed misaligned, it was no longer aligned, but it was misaligned. And the way it landed, that it was still shaking. And it was shaking so much that it began to form a smoke cloud all around my car until I could no longer see anything around me. And it was a freeway, and there were many cars that were driving around me. And all I can think of after a few seconds, because I couldn't do, I couldn't do anything for myself. There was no way that I was going to be, fig be able to figure this out. I was in a real bind. It was life threatening. And all I can think of as the cloud began to clear and I found myself now headed in this 90 degree angle toward a wall which was uh, divided by this little mound uh, hill with decorative rocks. I was headed toward that direction and I can see through the side of my eye that there was cars going fast getting onto the five freeway. And all I can say in that second was Jesus. Jesus. That's all I said. I said Jesus. And instantly it seemed as if my car stopped. And what actually ended up happening is that my wheel, my tires got caught on those decorative rocks on that ramp, that little mound, that little hill that was separating it from the, from the cars going onto the five freeway. And the moment the car stopped, I turned the car off and I sat there in shock, and all I can think of was, what just happened? You see, many times that has happened to us in our life. We find ourselves in a life-threatening bind. We find ourselves misaligned. We are no longer in line with the will of God for our life. And now we are facing a real life altering situation. And for myself, after a few moments, all I can say was, God, thank you. God, thank you for your mercy. God, thank you for saving me. Where do we find ourselves today? Do we find ourselves out of alignment with God's will? Do we find ourselves facing a, a very serious situation that was caused by our own misalignment? God wants us to know today that his mercy is available. That if you are willing to acknowledge that you have been living your life out of line with God's will, he is willing to bring you back into alignment tonight. But you have to come to God on his terms. You have to acknowledge, you have to make a verbal declaration, God, I've been self-willed. God, I've been walking in my own will, in my own ways. God, tonight I make a verbal declaration followed by my actions that I will 
pursue your will. I want us to spend a few moments in worship tonight. And my prayer is that as we worship, we ask God to make us a yielded vessel, to make us willing to yield to the will of the Father. Can we pray that prayer tonight? Can we ask God to do such a thing in our life? Are we willing to be honest before God tonight? I say yes. I say yes. your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Make us your vessels. Make us an offering. Make us whatever you want us to be. Because God, we can't.
It feels agonizing to relinquish our will. It feels painful to say, not my will, but yours be done. Because it hurts. Because, because it goes against our flesh. It goes against everything that we have been taught by the ways of this world. But God, tonight, we have made a decision. No matter the cost, no matter the price, that we will be willing to surrender our will to yours. And so we say, oh God, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Do what you must in our life, but don't leave us the same. We thank you, Father, that mercy spoke to us tonight. We thank you, Father, that grace spoke to us tonight that we have another chance to make things right. We have another chance to bring back into alignment our will with yours. And so we make a determination starting at this very moment, tonight, tomorrow, when we are faced with those choices, that we will say no to ours. And yes to yours. We thank you for your power, Holy Spirit, to flow, to function, and to work in us and through us what we cannot do for ourselves. We honor you tonight. We bring you glory and praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Continue on this journey of prayer and watch what God will do in your life. Amen. At this time, Pastor Sandy will come up. God bless you. What a powerful word that is. Amen. A call to a spiritual alignment. And I, before I we transition, I just wanted to share uh, December 24th, about 11.30 p.m., God was bringing me to an alignment. For, all, for a few years, my husband and I, we, wouldn't have a, we didn't have our own place. And I wanted to seek God on that day. And I wanted to have a great revelation. And I, I was ready for God to speak to me, to just give me this powerful word. And Pastor Laura, sometimes we get the alignments that we were not waiting for on today. Maybe that is your case. For me, it was December 24th. You know what the Lord told me in prayer? You are to love your husband. You're to take care of him. And at that time, I could not understand. I did not understand what God wanted me to do. But he wanted to align myself to love on my husband by cooking a good food to him. And I said, Lord, but he's already a man. He's, he, we've been doing this for 20 some years. The Lord told me, you are to love on him by cooking good meals to him. In February, I started good, cooking for him good meals. And I couldn't, I could not stop thinking when Pastor Laura was talking about alignment. That our alignment was for me as a wife. And it was to save my husband as two months after he had that heart attack. And he had already lost some weight. So I don't know how God spoke to you today, but I know God did. And sometimes, have you seen my, uh, cars that go like this, go to the other way? And I just feel in my spirit that there is a lot of cars, there is a lot of lights out of line that need to go to the mechanic. We can't, we can't just drive and drive. We have to take it to the mechanic. And Jesus is that mechanic that aligned my life. Amen. I wanted to share that testimony because God is a good God and his will is perfect for our lives. Amen. So now my sisters and brothers and friends, we will transition to give into the Lord a, a special offering. 
If you are a chapel of change, family member, the word of God says in Hebrew, do not neglect to do good and to share with, with you what you have. For such sacrifice is pleasing to God. Hebrew 13, 16. Not to neglect, not to give to the Lord. Amen. And I thank you for those faithful, for your generosity that you've given into the Lord. And may God continue to multiply your finances, your food, your health. And so we're going to ask you after I finish with a prayer. Just go to chapelchange.org and there's a tab that it says give and you just tap on it and you'll be able to give online. But I'm so happy also to announce that this Sunday we will have Fresh Hope Drive-In Experience Rally. How many of you are excited about that? We will be able to see you in your car. And I wanted to just, I'm so excited about that. If you are close to Whittier campus, we will have our drive-in, Fresh Hope drive-in experience rally at 5 o'clock at Whittier campus. We have limited parking lot. That's why you needed to make sure to register at chapelofchange.org. Also, in Paramount, this Sunday at 1230, we will have also our Fresh Hope Drive-In. Are you excited about that? I can't wait to see you to come into that parking lot. We can't wait to see you. We miss you. And I hope to, to uh, see you on Sunday. Amen at 1230. But make sure to also log in at 1015. We have our, our Bible studying as well. 1215 online so there is word for you you don't have to go to sleep without rest in your spirit because there is a word for you and at this time we're gonna go ahead and close with a prayer we thank you for joining us tonight at the school of prayer a call to spiritual alignment agreeing with the Lord amen with his will because his will is perfect so where you are would you just hold the hand of your spouse of your children it's a miracle that we are breathing that we are alive so let's thank god for his word and for our family for our friends so where you are just close your eyes grab your spouse hands or your children your friend in that living room, in that car. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. Because your word, Lord, is lamp into our feet and a light into our path. Thank you, Father God, because tonight you wanted us, Father, to be aligned to your will. For your will is perfect for our lives. Give us ear to hear your voice. Give us eyes to see your ways and allow us, Father God, to walk straight. Not through our power, but through your Holy Spirit power. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for my family. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for our family, Chapel of Change. Thank you for our pastors. Thank you, Father God, for your love and mercy. And Lord, allow this word to bear fruit, to bear fruit in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you on behalf of Pastor Brian. Pastor Laura and the leadership, we thank you for joining tonight, today, and may God bless you. We'll see you Sunday at 1015, online at 1230, in the parking lot, 
or 5 o'clock Saturday at Whittier Campus. Amen. God bless you and you have a beautiful, blessed, blessed night tonight. Amen. God bless you.